and I know him well. I know him well. He's he was fantastic. with you at CBS and has been since. Um, so I want to ask you both about Carter Page, but what unites us, Dan, at this point? Uh, what unites us is remembering the values that have held us together mm -hmm. all these times and nurturing those values. That's what holds us together. And I'm very optimistic. I think it's important to have hope during this time. It's a perilous time for the country, a very dangerous time for the country. But, you know, we Americans, we're not good at some things, but we're very good at holding steady. So I think steady is the byword of the moment. We'll get through this and come out the other end. It may take a while, and I'm very hopeful we'll come out stronger than we went into it. We have this ongoing debate, as you know, Dan, about what patriotism is, really. And the latest flashpoint has been in the NFL, where some say it's patriotic to stand for the national anthem. I think most Americans believe that's patriotic. But others have said it's patriotic to dissent, that that's what it means to be an American. When you, an American, when you think something is unjust, you ought to dissent. How do we begin to define what patriotism is today? Well, that's one of the things I wanted to discuss in What Unites Us, is what is patriotism in the second decade of the 21st century? Now, as far as the anthem is concerned, I stand for the national anthem. I put my hand over the heart without apology, and I usually at least mouth the words. That's what's inside me. That's what I feel. However, dissent is as American as the Revolutionary War, or as the cliche goes, it's, it's as American as apple pie. And I think it's very important we listen to one another when it's peaceful dissent. And while it's not my way of kneeling, some stand, some kneel, but it's having respect for, for those who kneel. And even though you say yourself, as I say to myself, it's not what I would do, I want to listen to what they have to say. Because as I understand what they're saying, it's not disrespect for the country. It's not disrespect, certainly, for the military. It's about calling attention to injustice. And we're not a perfect union. The Constitution says, you know, in order to create a more perfect union, it's always the, the North Star is out there. We want a perfect union, realizing we can't be perfect, but we can keep improving. So I think it's important to listen to one another. And the most important thing is to lower our voices. We need, we need an injection of civility with one another and respect for the other person's point of view. That doesn't mean we don't stand up for our principles. Mm -hmm. For example, with the Ku Klux Klan, just take one example. It doesn't mean that you have to nod your head, yes, yes, I understand the Ku Klux Klan. You can be true to your principles and still respect uh, the right of people to dissent and indeed the need for people to dissent. So let's don't forget that dissenters in their time are frequently seen as outliers, even unpatriotic. But as time goes along, History justifies their dissent. The women's right to vote, for example. Can you believe that we spent almost the first fifth of the 20th century and still didn't give women the right to vote? Those women who were talking about women's right to vote back in the 19th century were seen as radical dissenters, and some people saw them as unpatriotic. So we need to keep that in mind. So let's look now, um, John Fedoritz, at the bigger picture. And